This is what's happened 180 million years ago, and that's what's so interesting about this. 180 million years ago, the Earth was stretching because it was growing. Okay, so the crust was stretching. So what happens when something stretches? Well, it breaks and kind of spreads, sort of like the moon, sort of like the mares on the moon. Mares on the moon are stretch marks? Jesus, no kidding. What about on Mars? Yeah, the same thing too, you know, all those wide flat areas, same thing. Actually on all moons and all planets, except the you know, gas giants. So if that happens, then the crust is spreading, pulling apart and spreading. So in places it pops apart and spreads, it doesn't really pop apart very fast. But if what happens is that crust becomes thicker and thicker over time, okay, and gets goes from this to this, okay. At a certain point, if the aggressive growth, and let's just let me say this, Earth grows exponentially. Earth grows exponentially. If you go on the internet, you can find this crustal age map and you can see the exponential growth of it. You can see that red area, that's the last like 30 million years. You see that little area, that little bluish area? That's 190 million years ago. That little triangle inside the triangle is what it, is what the Earth grew in 190 million years ago. The red is what it grew in the last 10 million years. That red equals the surface area of Africa. That's how much it grew in the last 10 million years. Surface area of Africa. Not my information. National Geographic survey, whatever the hell. They did this map. It has nothing to do with me. I just made it a little bit better by making it more graphic. So it grows exponentially. If it grows exponentially, it can't hold on to its stretching. So what happens is it <coughs> cracks open. Cracks open began 180, 190 million years ago. Actually in the Mediterranean before that, but 180, 190 million years ago. And that's what North America and Africa represent that break apart and the, the Pacific, that purple thing. It starts pulling apart. As it pulls apart, it relieves the tension of the crust. Now you have pieces. Those pieces are not no longer pulling on one another. They're free. You can, so, you can see subduction around Chile. Yeah, you see this here? <laughs> this here? This is the ring of fire subduction. Here we go. This one. My God. He only has two hands. He's only got left hand. I agree that there's subduction. And I have isolated that subduction, the greatest yeah, amount of subduction I can find. And it's right here. This is the ring of fire. This is the subduction of the ring of fire. Microphone is for your mouth, not as a pointer. <laughs> <laughs> when did we let Indian? <laughs> okay. I went as far as I could. I took all the lines of the growth and extended them. That's what these lines are. For the last 60 million years, because that's when this started. This started, let me tell you a little history. Earth was expanding and growing. I'm sorry I said expanding and growing. Everything was moving apart. And then suddenly, down here, around the South Pole, Australia and Antarctica broke apart. Also, a rift circumnavigated the whole of the bottom of the Earth. And that circumnavigation connected up to the Pacific Rift, making a very, very powerful spread. You can see the amount of power that's going on in that spread, okay? Pushing Australia upward. Pushing Australia upward pushed Australia upward and did this. See these? You know what that is? Shattered oceanic plate. See it anywhere else on Earth? Shattered it. Broke it into gigantic pieces. This being pushed up. Shattered this into pieces that overlapped and went beyond each other. Giving purchase to the subduction of this material going under. Because that's the only way you can do it. You got 10 mile slabs that have, they're like this. If you're going to push one under the other, you have to release the pressure on one side. That's this. This began the ring of fire. These things are here. I'm not making these up. This is where the ring of fire is. This is the shattered plate. This is the spread that created this. 
This is where the subduction happens. This is the oldest plate on Earth, oldest oceanic plate on Earth. All of it, if you're a tracker in the woods, you can see things by looking at how things happened and what their ages are. You can look at the ages of these. This is new spreading plate. This is an old spreading plate. You would think it'd be old spreading plate, but it's not. It's new, off the coast of Asia. 30, 40 million years old, 20 million years old, 20. Uh, this is 10, 20, 30 million years old. You know it from here. This is all new plate. So it's thin. So when this pushed this up in the last 60 million years, this shattered. And then we have subduction for 60 million years. Not over here. Nothing like that's happening here. This is pushing very hard. That's probably why we have the Andes. Because mm -hmm. if something can't recurve easily, and there's a lot of pressure on it, then you have buckling. Well, I could be wrong, but some people can study this. I'll get back to this one. Okay. Uh, all I'm doing is analyzing. Now, I've said this to you fast, but if you study this, everything that I just told you is true. You do it slowly. The thing about everything that I say, and this is the thing that perhaps is disturbing to a lot of people that I talk to, is I really don't talk about theories. I don't like theories. I think they're made by men. <laughs> These are facts. These are facts. Now, what I've done here is I've differentiated them. I've put numbers on it so you can see exactly what they are. But that's what they are. That story is as clear as a bell. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, I, oh, I was going oh, oh. We're just oh, barely right. getting started. Um, I was going to precede my question by just a little comment. I live in Washington State, yeah. and they tell us that um, that there's um, that there's the a slide. subduction zone right there, but this is all new material. That's right. And it's kind of like okay, we're. The, I mean, you know, and then they try and say, well, it's way underneath the the continent, and it's kind of like, well, can you see it? But anyway, um, what I was going to ask her about. Let me just say something before you ask. Yeah. So, I read a geological, very good geological study that, that pointed out. This sort of got kind of covered up. I don't know why these things get covered up if they don't seem to agree with common theory. But they discovered them. All right. I'm just saying. There was a great report that, said that matched the uh, lower part of Alaska, the, the tectonic uh, layers of lower, of lower Alaska to California. That means the lower part of Alaska was wrapped that originally wrapped down and connected, because that's all it can mean, to California. Now what that means is that as Asia and North America spread apart, this is what happened. In other words, they were like this, they went like this. Came apart. Okay? That's also why the left hand side of the North American continent over there is sliding upward. Going like this. Because Alaska is still unwrapped. If you study it from that point of view, it make all the sense in the world. Go ahead. Yeah. My question is, I um, I read a fair amount of your stuff, and um, it seems sometimes like you're an ether guy, and sometimes like you're um, like you believe in a quantum flux, and. Um, I, I, by the way, am the am the guy in the theory of the little pops, you know, on the board. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, that, well, that was on the um, um, growing earth right. board. But um, well, let me say this. Yeah, I'd like to know what you think about well, the quantum flux. I don't you know. I think it's the fluctuate. <laughs> fluctuate. You mean fluctuate. ether's kind of going no, back no, and forth? It's a joke. A joke. Yeah. Is that right? What do you think? Funny again. It's the Henway. Uh, there is a lot of water. What? There is a lot of water. There is a lot of water, that's true. Where, where but there was from? less, because there was less planet. But go ahead. Where did it come from? Ah. I heard, I heard pear production. I think you know, heard, yes. Actually, yeah. uh -huh. that's, I can see. That's good. Um, uh, the, the thing about this is that you, know, you sort of have to have a room of physicists to get too deep into the, into the physics. Because 